What does a horse have in common with a stingray? What feature is shared by both pelicans and rattlesnakes? And aside from a beautiful smile, what trait do I share with a hagfish? Turns out, it's this thing. An elastic, rod-like structure called a notochord. Who knew? The notochord, along with a handful of other unique features, bring together the members of phylum chordata, the chordates. But what is a chordate? What's the point of having a flexible rod in the middle of your body? And who is this gentleman? We'll find the answer to all those questions and more as we continue exploring the Tree of Life. The phylum chordata is defined by five features, which I'm gonna breeze through kinda quickly just because they're a tad boring. Anyway, those five features are a notochord, a stiff but flexible rod that provides a central structure for the body to grow around, a hollow dorsal nerve cord, a key ingredient in the central nervous system, an endostyle, which creates mucus to trap food particles during filter feeding and is the evolutionary precursor to the thyroid, pharyngeal slits or pouches, openings in the pharynx used for filter feeding, and a post-anal tail, which I imagine to be fairly self-explanatory. All chordates possess these features at some stage during embryonic development, but some of them change their function or disappear entirely as the animal grows. Chordata is divided into three subphyla, one of which is pretty recognizable. The other two, maybe not so much. We'll start with the subphylum vertebrata, since they make up the vast majority with over 73,000 different species. This is the most recognizable animal group on the planet, and just so happens to include... All members of subphylum vertebrata possess a vertebral column made of bone or cartilage that acts as a support structure for the rest of the body. This is also called a spine or a backbone. As a vertebrate embryo develops, a spine grows and replaces the notochord. With one slimy exception. The hagfish is a type of jawless fish belonging to the clade Agnatha along with lamprey. But unlike lamprey, and every other member of subphylum vertebrata, hagfish keep their notochord and never develop a spine. Hagfish do, however, have a skull, leading some experts to believe that craniata is a more suitable name for the subphylum. To confuse matters further, research into hagfish evolution seems to point to them having possessed a spine at one point and then losing it in a process known as secondary loss, which is when an evolved trait reverts back to an ancestral form, effectively making the hagfish a vertebrate without vertebrae. Subphylum number two is called tunicata, the tunicates, representing about 3,000 species of soft-bodied filter feeders that look like disembodied organs, but are actually the closest living relatives of vertebrates. Tunicates are bafflingly strange animals that will be getting an entire episode dedicated to them in the future, but for the purposes of this video, we're going to focus on their development. While adult tunicates have very little in common with other chordates, tunicate larvae tell a different story. Larval tunicates are free-swimming, tadpole-like animals that possess tails, a notochord, and a nerve cord. But as they metamorphose into adults, the tail and notochord degenerate and disappear. The nerve cord shrinks, and the mature tunicate lives the rest of its life as an organic water pump. Last but not least, subphylum cephalochordata. A big name for what is essentially just a little guy. Better known as lancelets, they're among the elite few animals that we refer to as living fossils, having undergone almost no physical changes in over a hundred million years. To me, they look like a fish drawn by a worm, and I say that with the utmost respect. There are 30 species of lancelets currently recognized, and they're of particular interest to biologists because they provide a rare glimpse at early chordate evolution, retaining all five chordate features for the entirety of their life cycle. At less than three inches long, they have no true skeleton or brain, no heart, and no respiratory system but more than one source did inform me that they have, quote, numerous gonads, which is pretty fun. They spend their days half buried in the sand, supported by a notochord and a nerve cord, 
filtering water through their pharyngeal slits, collecting food with their endostyle, and happily wagging their post-anal tail. Lancelets are one of the last living representatives of a lost world. In a time before fish, notochord-bearing creatures like these created the template for vertebrate evolution. And the fact that they still exist today is a testament to how well the system works. Next week, it's time to dive into some leftovers as we visit the 15 phyla that didn't get their own episodes, but still deserve some recognition and love. Most people go their entire lives without knowing that these animals exist, but they're among us nonetheless, and I think they've earned some time in the spotlight. Some of the weirdest little freaks you've never heard of, the 15 forgotten phyla. Like, subscribe, comment, follow me, blah, 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 blah. and I'll see you next Friday. Until then, stay curious, stay connected, and never stop evolving.